number two, once you have a knowledge base with a lot of sentences about the world that the agent is perceiving, you need to resolve that. In order to resolve that, we're going to use logical equivalences among, among other rules to resolve these sentences. So first we know that A and B, alpha and beta, is commutative, so it's the same as beta and alpha. We know a bunch of these rules, right? So there's a few rules, so for example, uh, some very important ones is, are that alpha, if alpha implies beta, that is equivalent to say not alpha implies not, uh, not beta implies not alpha. That's called contraposition. Sometimes we need one of these elements on the other side and we can, we can bring it to the other side by negating the whole thing negating them. Um, also, if you want to get rid of this implication sign, alpha implies beta is the same as saying not alpha or beta. And now this is going to be very important later. We'll get rid of this imply sign and we'll have just ors. The double implication, the biconditional, right? If you have biconditional, you can make it into two conditionals. Alpha implies beta and beta implies alpha. That's biconditional elimination. And again, using this rule above, I mean, sorry, this rule above here, it is possible to get this expression into these two and each one of these into just an or and not. Okay? So we'll see how it is possible to bring these expressions into just combinations of, of ors and ands and nots. Okay? Now, there's De Morgan laws. What happens if you have a negation of something and something else, well that becomes the negation of the first uh, literal or the negation of the second one. The same thing for the, the inverse is true. And there's distributivity also. What if you have alpha and two other variables, uh, one variable or another one? Well you do alpha and the first or alpha and the second. Alpha and the first or alpha and the second. So these are rules that are going to help us um, that are going to help us resolve, um, evaluate expressions, evaluate sentences, and I will refer to them by name here. Okay. So um, also uh, a few other theoretical concepts are that if alpha is equivalent to beta. If and only if alpha entails beta and beta entails alpha, that means that both alpha and beta are equivalent. Also, a tautology models, for example, p or not p. This is always true. There is no value for p that you can find that will make this false. Um, alpha entails beta if it's true. Okay. And then the concept of uh, satisfiability is that if you have an expression in which at least one model makes it true, then that expression is satisfiable, that sentence is satisfiable. Well, let's focus on uh, utilizing these rules now. Utilizing these rules, you can prove some theorems. So for example, um, there's uh, modus ponens, it's called, is when you have alpha implies beta, and you know that alpha is true, then you know beta is also true. So you can actually eliminate if you have alpha and alpha implies beta. And you can reduce this to beta only if you know that alpha is true. Also, if you know that alpha and beta is true, then both have to be true. So you can just uh, reduce this expression just to simply alpha or simply beta. Okay, we're going to use some of these rules um, to evaluate a knowledge base. Another rule that these are also come from the rules that I showed you at the beginning. If alpha if and only if beta, right, we can rewrite this as alpha implies beta and beta implies alpha. If we know that if we know that the above one is true, if we know that this is true, we can rewrite this as alpha uh, if and only if beta. So we have these rules and ways to simplify some of these rules. Now, let's look at our Wumpus world, where we have the grid, and we have our basic five rules. I want you to copy these rules down, because we're going to use them later on. What we want to do now is to find out, is there a pit in 1, 2? We do not know. 
is there a pit in 1, 2 here? Okay. We do not know. We're going to try and find it by uh, logic. So these are the rules that we have. There are no pits in 1, 1 because that's where we started. If I feel a breeze in 1, 1, that means that there's a pit in 1, 2 or a pit in 2, 1. If I feel a breeze in 2, 1 here, that means that there's a pit in 1, 1, 2, 2, or 3, 1. I know that there's no breeze in 1, 1 here, and I know that there's a breeze in 2, 1 over here. Okay. Now, here are some things that I do. And again, I want you to copy these rules somewhere in a paper or something because we'll be referring to a rule 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. So we have my knowledge bases R1 and R2 and R3 and R4 and R5. So the, the conjunction of all five rules. I want to prove that there's no pits in 1, 2. Okay, basically that not P12 is true. So one of the things that I do, well, I can start by adding a new rule. So basically I am using my my elimination rules and my my uh, inference rules that I showed you above and the equivalences to derive more rules based on what I already have. So if I use biconditional elimination on rule two, okay, so basically get rid of a of an if and only if. So go back. Rule two has this if and only if. If I get rid of that using the biconditional elimination, which is this rule here, okay, this rule here. So if I get rid of that in rule two, I will end up with a sixth rule, which is the same, right? But it's the biconditional elimination as two implications. In the same way, I can add a seventh rule by and elimination to R6, to rule six. So this is rule six, is one term and the other. So if this is true, then I can just assert that one of these is true for sure, right? And I'll assert that this guy here is true. You can see we're adding rules. We're basically reducing and transforming some of the previous rules and adding them as new rules. And eventually, we'll run into something that will either prove or disprove this assertion. So let's continue. Now I add an eighth rule by contrapositives. Using this, right? The contrapositive says that you can put this term on the on the left hand side and this term on the right hand side as long as you negate both terms. So we create a rule eight, which is equivalent to rule seven, but is phrased differently. Then we create a rule nine by modus ponens with rule eight and rule four. Right, so this is my rule eight. This implies this over here, and rule four, if we recall, rule four is not B11. So I know that this is true, therefore I can just keep the second term. I know that the second term is true. So I add my rule nine like that. And then finally, I put the not inside the parentheses and I end up with not P12 and not P21. Basically, these two are true, right? Because I started from my knowledge base assuming that it is true. And I want to prove that there's no pits in 1, 2. So if there are no pits in 1, 2, if, if everything holds true and there are no pits in 1, 2, then no pits in 1, 2 is true. Therefore, in my rule 10, just by developing these expressions, I ended up with something that said no pit in 1, 2 and no pit in 2, 1. So I know that neither 1, 2 nor 2, 1 contains a pit. And this is how I can resolve this. So if I have these rules, I can resolve it like this. However, solving those rules might be uh, rather complicated because I have to have so many rules in my memory. We'll, we'll look at it. We'll look at this. Uh, mechanisms to solve this a search. Initially we'll have the initial knowledge base with whatever rules we have. If we're going to do this as search, the actions are going to be the set of all the inference rules applies to sentences that match the top half. The result will be to add a sentence at the bottom half of the inference rule and the goal is the state that contains the sentence we want to prove. Okay, So basically what we just did um, now, for example, 
let's say the agent returns to 1-1 one, one from 2-1 and goes to 1-2. So it returns to 1-1 one, one for 2-1. It was here, returns to 1-1 one, one, and then goes to 1-2. We can add a few rules. There, there's no breeze in 1-2, no breeze over here, so the agent is perceiving stuff. And then we know that if there's a breeze in 1-2, then these three, um, th there's a possibility of fits in these three squares, right? So we're going to do the, this inference by resolution. After we've moved, we add these rules, okay? And then our, our knowledge base now is an AND of 12 rules. We can continue using the same process as earlier. So we can infer rule 13 is a not P22, which is a contrapositive. Then we infer rule 14, which is not P13. Then we infer rule 15, which is this OR, okay, by biconditional elimination. Uh, and R3 and modus ponens on, R, on rule 5, we end up with this rule over here. And then here's something interesting, is that the, the literal not P22 in rule 13 here, in rule 13, remember we have ands and all, ands. all these rules have an and in between in my knowledge base. This results with P22 in rule 15, to do in rule 15 is there, right there. And then what happens is that if we have ands with two ors where there's a the complement, so ne the negation and the and and the positive, right? What happens is we eliminate this term from the expression and we end up with p11 or p31. That is a resolution. More generally, if you have some variable or some other variable, and then any one of the variables in the OR, you have it negated in another expression that is another expression. Basically, what you end up with is you just eliminate the variable A from the equation as a whole and OR the two variables. This is, if you have some OR and another OR such that the second OR contains the complement of one of your variables, that variable goes away and you just OR the remaining variables. So we can see if there's anything else that resolves, right? We can continue resolving. Now one key concept here, which we talked about earlier, is that we can always express any sentence in conjunctive, conjunctive normal form. That means that any sentence can be expressed as a conjunction of disjunctions, of literals. What that means is any sentence can be expressed as several ors and several other ors and several other ors and so on and so forth. Okay, So for example, this rule, B, uh, there's a breeze in B11 if and only if there's a pit in 1-2 or there's a pit in 2-1. If we want to make that in conjunctive normal form, what we do is eliminate the double implication by replacing, uh, by replacing it with, with the rule that eliminates it, and we end up with that. Now, we eliminate the implication by replacing it with the rule that says alpha implies B is the same as not A or B. These rules were given at the beginning of this video. So what, then we end up with ORs and ORs over here, right? Now we have to resolve inside. So first, the negation has to go inside the parentheses there, right? And this is the De Morgan law that I'm going to use, and that's the negation inside the parentheses. And now I have to distribute the or over the ands, and I end up with the following. I end up with these ors and these other ors and these other ors, and it is now in conjunctive normal form. Conjunctive normal form is a lot easier to deal with because you only have negations, ands, and ors, and those are operations that are easy to perform, and there are no major rules about it, you just perform them. Um, so we're going to cover a couple of algorithms uh, that will use this resolution and will be based on using a proof by contradiction. Okay, One key concept of these algorithms, of this first algorithm, is that 
we, we remember we need to show that the knowledge base entails the query. And we will, we will do that by showing that the knowledge base and the negation of the query is not satisfiable. Basically, if you add the opposite of the query to the knowledge base and that is not satisfiable, then it means that the query is actually true. We will apply resolution to this, uh, to the knowledge base and the negation of the query. Right? So to all the rules of the knowledge base, we'll add the negation of the query in conjunctive normal form and we will resolve the query. Okay, and that's going to be the topic of the next video.